I've shown a lot of yarns in my videos, but I don't think I've ever really done a formal yarn haul. But since the beginning of the year, I really got in the mood to play with some breed-specific wool yarns. In case you're not familiar, breed-specific yarn is made out of wool that comes from a single sheep breed. So it's not blended with anything. It's 100% wool from a particular breed of sheep. And you all know how much I love trying out new things, including new yarns from sheep that I've never used before. So over the past few months, I've ordered some breed-specific wool yarns from several different companies and have collected quite a few skeins. So I'm going to break this up into two different videos. For this video, I have 10 skeins here that I thought I would show you and tell you about today. So if you're interested in hearing about each of the sheep breeds that produce this yarn, along with the unique characteristics of the yarn itself, then just keep on watching to see my recent yarn haul. Hi everybody and welcome back to U University. I'm Dr. Kelly. Oh gosh, this past few weeks have just flown by. I planned on recording this video at least two weeks ago, but I ended up getting sick two weekends in a row and I rarely get sick, so this was quite unusual for me. Um, the first weekend I got sick from food poisoning and then last weekend I came down with the norovirus which is going around campus and it's like the stomach flu. Um, I actually missed two days of school which is the first time I've ever missed class because of illness in over 20 years. So that was pretty crummy and I got way behind on grading papers and exams so I've been working on catching up with that. Anyway, I'm fine now and I'm excited to share with you today some beautiful yarns that I've recently acquired. I have 10 skeins of yarn here in front of me and each of these skeins is from a specific breed of sheep. Now just a note, none of these yarns are super washed technically, so they're not going to be machine washable. They'll need to be hand washed. Even if it says on the label they're machine washable, I would probably still wash them by hand. As I'm telling you about each of these yarns, I will let you know where I purchased each skein, how much it costs, and all the details about it. And then I'll give you a brief overview about the sheep that the yarn comes from and the characteristics of its wool. And for your convenience, I'll include links to all these yarns in the information box right below. My plan is to do another video in about six months to follow up on this yarn haul and show you what I ended up making with each yarn. So let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. Okay, and before I get into it, let me share with you my go-to resources for information about the characteristics of various sheep breeds and breed-specific wool. Mainly, I consult three books, the Fleece and Fiber Sourcebook, the Spinner's Book of Fleece and the Field Guide to Fleece. These are all outstanding books containing detailed descriptions of sheep breeds and their wool characteristics. The Fleece and Fiber Sourcebook includes over 200 animals that are sources of yarn, like sheep, but also goats, rabbits, alpaca, and more. The Field Guide to Fleece covers 100 sheep breeds and their wool, and it's basically a condensed version of the Fleece and Fiber Sourcebook. And it's just a nice place to quickly look up something. And then the Spinner's Book of Fleece talks about sheep and yarn in various categories like long wools, fine wools, and down breeds. And as the title indicates, it's really focusing on spinning the wool fiber, but it contains great information about the different sheep breeds and their wool. So those are my go-to resources for this kind of thing. Now, one more thing before we get to the yarn, let me give you a quick refresher on a couple of vocabulary terms in case you're not familiar with how wool is described. The feel of a particular wool is affected by several factors. And here I'm talking about how soft the wool feels or how itchy and scratchy it feels. So how comfortable the wool feels next to the skin. And research shows that over 90% of the way the wool feels to us is due to fiber diameter. 
The smaller the diameter of each individual hair, the softer it will feel. The hair diameter is measured in microns, and a micron is equal to one one thousandth of a millimeter, which is obviously a microscopic measurement. As comparisons, human hair diameter is about 70 microns, and a white blood cell is about 25 microns. The human visibility limit is about 40 microns. The diameter of individual sheep wool fibers is smaller than that. So these are individual hairs that you would not even be able to see with the naked eye. For example, the softest fibers like cashmere, angora, and ultrafine merino wool have micron counts under 15. And coarser, scratchier wools like Navajo churro or the outer coat of Icelandic sheep have micron counts around 40. So for softest feel, you're going to be looking for a small micron count. Another characteristic of wool is its staple length, which is how long each individual fiber or hair is. Some wool consists of very short fibers, like the wool fibers of a Suffolk sheep are only about two, three inches long. And then some wool um, has very long fibers, like the outer coat of Icelandic sheep can be 18 inches long. Now this characteristic is usually more important to people who are spinning wool and turning it into yarn, but it also can affect how soft the yarn feels. So today in terms of talking about these yarns and sheep breeds, I thought I would go from the most rustic kind of rugged yarns and count down to the softest ones. Okay, so let's get to it. The first yarn I have here is this beautiful Border Lester yarn from Solitude Wool. It is sport weight and there are 240 yards in this five ounce skein. It's naturally dyed with indigo, which created this lovely blue-gray color. The price is $42, which is kind of expensive for a skein of yarn, but you'll see that a lot of these breed-specific wool yarns are a bit pricey because they're not as commonly found as some other yarns like Merino or BFL Blueface Luster. Okay, so let's talk about the sheep and then their wool. So border luster sheep come from northern areas of England which border Scotland. Because they originated in this English-Scottish borderland area, this is how they got their name, Border Lester. They're considered a conservation breed that is at risk in the UK with only 900 to 1500 breeding females registered. In appearance, the Border Lester are known for their Roman nose and large erect ears, kind of like bunny ears. They're usually completely white, although sometimes you'll find a black or gray one, and their legs and head are free of wool. They're classified as a long wool breed, which means that their wool fibers are long and have a larger fiber diameter, so it's not the softest feeling sheep's wool. Um, the individual fibers of the border luster sheep can grow up to 10 inches long. However, the animals are generally shorn twice a year when the wool has reached a length of around four inches. The locks are beautifully crimped with the tips ending in a tight curl, and the fiber diameter is about 30 to 38 microns, putting it in the coarser, more rugged category. Now, if you have princess skin that can only tolerate touching the softest fibers, then Border Luster yarn might not be for you. But I love this wool. I think it's very nice and cushiony. This particular yarn is a two-ply, so it has a lot of squish. I find it very comfortable on the hands and body, but it might be a little too prickly for the face and neck. Um, in looking at different ideas for what people make with Border Luster yarn, it looks like a lot of outerwear like sweaters and vests. There are also quite a few mittens, fingerless mitts, and hats. Okay, so that is a little bit about Border Luster yarn. The next yarn in my haul is this beautiful Coopworth yarn, which is also from Solitude Wool. 
It is a three ply sport weight yarn with 340 yards in this 100 gram skein. The colorway is called Jerry's Day Lilies. So it's got all these purples and reds and orange colors in it. The price is $31. Coopworth Sheep got their name from Ian Coop, who was responsible for creating this breed at Lincoln University in New Zealand. In the 1950s and 60s, he crossed border lusters with Romney sheep to produce the Coopworth breed. So these are a relative of the border luster sheep that I just talked about. It's probably not surprising then that this is another long wool breed that has a wool free face. The body is covered with lustrous locks of wool in white or other natural colors of silver, gray, brown, or black. The locks have a well-defined crimp that is spiral and pointed at the tip. The staple length is 5 to 8 inches, and the micron count is 30 to 39, which again is in the more rustic category. So this particular yarn is very nice and squishy. I would have no problem with it on my hands and body. It might be a little scratchy for the neck and face areas. Um, its recommended uses are for outerwear. A lot of people make wraps, shawls, hats, and mittens out of it. And it also felts really well, so that's another idea for something to make with it. So okay, that is Coopworth Sheep and Yarn. Okay, my next yarn is this lovely Wensleydale yarn from Woolly Mammoth Fiber Company, which is out of the UK. I got it from the Woolly Thistle, which is a US shop that carries a lot of hard to get British yarns. So this is 100% Wensleydale wool. It's fingering weight with 382 yards in this 100 gram skein. This colorway is called Cloud and it's a beautiful, lustrous, very, very subtle, light blush color with a little bit of a halo. The price is $28 for the skein. Now the Wensleydale sheep originated in the Wensleydale region of North Central England. It's another relative of the Border Luster that is visually striking with long lustrous wool that falls in ringlets almost to the ground in unshorn sheep. The wool comes in a variety of natural colors from the darkest black to brown to gray to silver and white. They have a distinctive dark colored head and ears that are free from wool except for a forelock that will hang down into their face. This is another British conservation breed that is considered at risk with only 900 to 1500 breeding ewes registered. So yeah, this is another member of the English long wool family with a fiber staple length of 7 to 12 inches. The fiber diameter is pretty similar to the Coopworth and the Border Luster that I just talked about at about 30 to 36 microns. So it's on the rustic side and is another wool that would be good for outerwear and winter accessories. Now this particular yarn is a two ply fingering weight with a little sheen and a bit of a halo, as I said. When I looked up what people are making with Wensleydale wool, I saw a lot of sweaters, as well as some shawls, mittens, and hats. I did see a few sock projects as well. And Wensleydale is resistant to felting, so socks might be a good choice because they wouldn't felt as they rubbed around in your shoes. Okay, my next yarn takes us into a little bit softer category. And this is yarn made from 80% dorset down and 20% nylon. So this one is a blend rather than 100% dorset down wool. It's another one I bought from Solitude Wool. The yarn is sport weight and there are 235 yards in this 120 gram skein. It's marketed as sock yarn, which is the reason why they added a bit of nylon just to add durability. The colorway is called Waimea Canyon, and it features all these beautiful greens and blues. The colors are so vibrant, which just shows you how well Dorset wool takes up dye. And the price is $38 for the skein. The Dorset Down Sheep is another breed native to the UK. 
It originated in the Dorset Downs region of England in the early 19th century. It is a conservation breed that is listed as a minority breed by the Rare Breed Survival Trust. This means that there are 1,500 to 3,000 breeding ewes registered. Their fleece is short and white. The staple length is two to four inches, and they usually have dark brown, wool-free heads and legs. These sheep are mostly raised for their meat production, but their wool is nice too. Their fleece is considered to be medium grade, in between coarse and fine, so it's moderately soft with a micron count of 25 to 30. The wool is dense with excellent elasticity and superb loft. The locks have an even and distinct crimp with a medium luster and it's resistant to felting. This is a very squishy, springy yarn. I think most people could wear it around the neck and face, so I could definitely see using it for a cowl or a shawl. But it's kind of marketed as a sock yarn, so when I looked online, I saw that a lot of people are making socks with it, and I think socks would be really luscious in this yarn. As a sock yarn, I like that it has a bit of nylon blended with the dorset down, and I like that it doesn't easily felt. Next up, I have a skein of gorgeous Suffolk yarn from Mountain Meadow Wool. Suffolk is another breed in the down family of sheep. This yarn is two ply worsted weight with 200 yards in this 100 gram skein. These yarns are hand dyed and the colorway here is teal. It looks like the dye uptake is more tonal than a completely flat solid color. So you see subtle variegation with some lighter and some darker teal in the skein. I think it's gonna knit up beautifully, but if you use it for a multi-skein project, you're definitely gonna need to alternate skeins throughout your project. And the cost of a skein of this yarn is $16.30, which is the lowest price of all the yarns I'm talking about today. So a little bit about the Suffolk sheep. These sheep originated in England in the early 1800s and were imported to North America in 1888. They are very popular for family farms and 4-H clubs in the U.S. and Canada. Their fleece is white and their faces and legs are black and free of wool. Suffolks are generally grown for meat production and their fleece has kind of been disregarded, but Suffolk wool is becoming more available as fiber artists are seeking out new types of fiber to play with. The Suffolk is another member of the down family. Down sheep fibers are known for being springy, elastic, and strong. The staple length is usually pretty short and the Suffolk staple length is two to three and a half inches long. It's a medium grade fleece with a micron count of 25 to 33 microns. So similar to the Dorset I just talked about. Now I think this yarn is very nice. It is so springy and elastic. And even in the hank, you can see the elasticity. It's amazing. I would say that Suffolk has more of a matte finish than any kind of luster. In looking for project ideas, I saw that a lot of people had made hats and sweaters with it, including dog sweaters, which were very cute. <laughs> I even saw some socks made out of this yarn. But whatever the project, I think the stitch definition would be awesome, and it would be nice and squishy. All right, my next yarn is Montedale, and it's actually 90% Montedale wool and 10% nylon. It's another yarn from Solitude Wool. This skein is 240 yards of sport weight yarn that is two ply in the colorway Cobalt. It is a very intense bright blue that leans purple. I really love it. And the price is $32 for a skein. Now Montedale sheep are an American breed that has only been around for about 60 years or so. It originated in Missouri as the result of a breeding program designed to maximize high quality wool as well as meat. So like a lot of other sheep, these are a dual purpose breed. Almost all Montedales have white wool on their bodies and their hooves and noses are black. 
their legs and heads are relatively free of wool. So Montedale wool is a medium grade of about 25 to 31 microns, which puts it toward the middle of the softness scale. The staple length is three to five inches. And this is another yarn that is very squishy with a lot of spring and elasticity. Um, I think it's nice around the neck and face, and it would be great for a variety of projects. Um, on Ravelry, I saw socks, shawls, sweaters, hats, and mittens made out of this yarn. So yeah, there's a lot of options for this one. Okay, and this is a gorgeous skein of Tunis yarn. It's also from Solitude Wool. It is 100% Tunis wool, worsted weight. There are 120 yards in the skein, and the colorway is called Freeze Pops. I love all these bright colors, the lime green, the purples, the orange. It's also an interesting yarn construction. It kind of looks like a single that's lightly spun, but it's actually two pencil robings spun together. The price on this is $24. So a little bit about the Tunis sheep that produced this yarn. They are an ancient breed that comes from Tunisia, a country on the north coast of Africa. They are a type of what's called fat-tailed sheep, which are old breeds whose tails contain a lot of fat, which provide energy reserves for the animal in harsh climates. Fat-tailed sheep can be found mainly in the Middle East, Central Asia, and Africa. So the Tunis were first imported into the United States as a gift to George Washington in the late 1700s. The American Tunis sheep is the new breed that was eventually created from that original stock. They have a distinctive look with a slender head and droopy ears. They're born with a dark red fleece, but it turns ivory white as the lamb matures. The head, ears, and legs usually remain red, and sometimes you hear people calling them redheads. So yeah, you can easily distinguish a Tunis from other sheep breeds by their red face and legs, which is a lovely contrast to their creamy white woolly bodies. The wool is lustrous and long stapled, measuring four to six inches. The fleece is a medium grade wool at about 24 to 31 microns. Now Tunis wool has been popular for making rugs and carpets, but in my opinion, it certainly is not that rustic. I think this yarn is much, much softer than the super coarse wools you would usually see made into rugs. This is a nice yarn that I could easily wear around my neck and face. I don't find it prickly or scratchy at all. It is very squishy and pleasant to the touch. I see that projects made out of this Tunis yarn include a lot of winter accessories like hats, scarves, and mittens. There's also some blankets and some felted bags that are pretty. So those are some options for Tunis yarn. The next yarn I have to show you is Targi. So this is 100% Targi wool, worsted weight from Sincere Sheep, and this is their Bannock base. This skein is 280 yards in four ounces and the colorway is called Aegean. It is a beautiful tonal light bluish green. I really like the subtle variegations in it. And I also like that it's hand dyed with natural dyes. So this is another one you would wanna alternate skeins if you're making a larger project with it. This is a nice round three ply yarn that is plump and stretchy. The price is $30. Now, the Targi sheep breed is one of the most recently developed. It actually originated out of a breeding program by the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Idaho in 1926. The name Targi came from the Targi National Forest, which is in the area where the flocks of sheep grazed. And that forest was named for a Native American chief, Targi, from the Bannock tribe, which is why I'm sure the base of this yarn is called Bannock. As far as appearance, Targi sheep are all light colored, ranging from light brown to white. They have a heavy coat with wool-free face and legs. They do have some wool on their heads that reaches to just between their eyes. 
Targi sheep are mostly raised for their high quality wool production. The average staple length of the fleece is about three to five inches with a fiber diameter of around 22 to 25 microns. This still places them in the medium grade category, but we're getting toward the softer end now. Out of all the yarns I'm talking about today, Targi is the only one that I've used before. Um, I actually made this shawl out of Targi wool many years ago, and I absolutely love it. It's so soft and squishy, and I wear it in the winter like a scarf under my coat all the time. So even though technically the micron count puts it in the medium range, I definitely think this yarn is soft enough to wear next to the skin, including the face and the neck. Now Targi is known for being lofty and elastic. It's very pillowy and squishable, and it has good durability. So it would be good for things like cowls and hats and fingerless gloves and even sweaters. It's a nice combination of cozy and elegant. So yeah, that gives you an idea of what Targi yarn is like. All right, next up is some Rambouillet yarn. Who loves to say Rambouillet as much as I do? Okay, so this yarn is from Sincere Sheep and it's their base called Eureka Worsted, which is a nice plump three ply yarn. So it's worsted weight and there are 250 yards in the skein. And again, the yarn is hand dyed using natural dyes. And this color is called Albizia, named after a tropical tree. It's a beautiful sunny yellow color that's very cheerful and happy. The price is $30. So let me tell you a little bit about Rambouillet sheep whose wool went into this yarn. Rambouillet is in the Merino family and it's actually known as French Merino as well as Rambouillet. In 1796, once Spain began allowing their prized merino sheep to be exported, the French King Louis XVI imported over 300 of them to his estate near Paris called Rambouillet, which is where they got their name. The Spanish merino were modified slightly through crossbreeding for smoother skin that's easier to shear and more resistant to skin problems and external parasites. They're also a little bit bigger than Merinos. By the early 19th century, a well-defined breed was developed. Rambouillet sheep are distinguishable by their white faces and woolly legs. Most have a bright creamy to white fleece that's very dense and covers pretty much their entire body and even their forehead, but not their lower face. Some Rambouillet have horns and some don't. The horns on rams are either tightly curled close to their heads or in a more sprawling curl which extends away from the face. Of course, these sheep are well known for their superior wool, which is very similar to that of Merino. In fact, a lot of commercial products marketed as Merino are actually made from Rambouillet wool. It is soft and pliable to the touch. The staple length is about two to four inches and the fiber diameter ranges from 18 to 24 microns, which is in the fine to medium fine range. And it has a little less luster than Merino wool does. As far as the feel of Rambouillet yarn, it is super smooth and definitely nice for wearing next to the skin. Even princess skin would like Rambouillet, I think. It is not prickly or itchy whatsoever. And what are people making with this? Beautiful sweaters, cowls, hats, mittens, fingerless gloves, and even baby items. Yeah, this is soft enough for baby clothes and baby blankets. So that is a little bit about Rambouillet yarn. And now my last yarn to show you is this Cormo Worsted from Sincere Sheep. It is 100% Cormo wool, worsted weight, and there are 250 yards in the skein. It is three ply with a medium twist and has good elasticity. Like the other Sincere Sheep yarns, it's hand dyed using natural dyes. And the color for this one is called Hester, which I would say is kind of a tomato red. It's really pretty, and the skein is $34.
So let's talk a little bit about Cormo sheep. This is a sheep breed that originated in Tasmania in the early 1960s. It is a cousin of the Merino, and its name derives from the names of two of its parent sheep breeds, Corydale and Merino. So Cor for Corydale and Mo for Merino. The objective of the Cormo breeding program was to produce a more fertile, higher wool producing, and larger frame sheep. And the selection was based on precise scientific measurements of these desirable characteristics. So this breeding program is probably the most scientifically controlled of any in history. Cormo sheep are medium sized with a thick wool fleece and an open face. They're mainly white and have a high degree of fiber uniformity due to their meticulous breeding history. Their wool is exceptionally soft, dense, and consistent with a staple length of three to five inches and fiber diameter of 17 to 23 microns. That puts it in the fine category, which is incredibly soft and smooth. This yarn is just lovely in the look of it and the feel of it. It is absolutely appropriate for wearing next to the skin. As far as project ideas on Ravelry, there are so many beautiful cardigans as well as things like scarves, cowls, and shawls made out of this yarn. So yeah, it's very versatile and would be good for both everyday and luxurious accessories. Okay, so that is my quick rundown of 10 skeins of breed-specific wool yarn. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my yarn haul, and let me know down below if you've used any of these yarns or any yarns made from these particular sheep breeds, and if you have, what did you think? How did you like it? And what did you make with it? Or what other breed-specific wool have you worked with? I'm actually getting ready to do another video on yarn from some lesser known sheep breeds. In fact, I think that will be my next video, so stay tuned for that. But I'm interested to know what your favorites are, your favorite sheep breed or your favorite wool to work with and why you like it. I think it'll be really fun to get different people's recommendations so we can go out and try some new yarns. As always, I'll include links to everything I talked about today in the information box right below this video for your convenience. You can go check out the yarn and try it for yourself if you want to. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll plan on recording a follow-up video in about six months or so to showcase what I actually did with all this yarn. I'll show you what I ended up making with each of these skeins. So let me know down below if you'd be interested in seeing that kind of follow-up. Well, so that brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks so much, everybody, for taking the time today to watch my show, and I'll see you next time. Until then, stay smart and have a sparkly week.